Malaysia is one of the most important international trading nations in Southeast Asia. It has hundreds of billions of dollars worth of trade going in and out of the country. A nation that heavily depends on maritime trade means that it has a strategic significance within the South China Sea. This importance puts meaning into Malaysia's national defense, specifically in its naval operations. The Royal Malaysian Navy is one of the most important assets of the entire country. They guard the country's shipping lines, ocean resources, and coastal areas. This is why the government spends billions upon billions of dollars, employing tens of thousands of people, of which operate blockbuster ships and submarines along with defense missiles. But one of the most complex questions to really answer is its strength. Specifically, how strong is the Royal Malaysian Navy? Can it hold its ground against the powerhouses of Asia? Does it even have the proper equipment to fend off foreign threats? Well, these are very subjective questions. What makes naval warfare so unique is that sometimes the air force and ground forces also hold a formidable force, not limited to the navy. But to simplify these, we can understand the strength of the Royal Malaysian Navy by talking about its naval assets and how strong they are. To begin this, let us first discuss what the Royal Malaysian Navy is all about. Locally known as Tentara Laut Deraya Malaysia hails from humble beginnings from the British colonial government. It worked its way up through decades of experience and countless ships. From the Second World War to its independence, the Navy has continued to excel in modernization. Its growth was not limited to national borders. It has collaborated or acquired equipment from the British to Germany and France to Turkey, Canada, South Korea, and most importantly, the United States. The RMN boasts several world-class naval fleets. One of the most significant is the Laksamana class. It boasts a long history for the Navy, with a total crew of 47 people equipped with a cannon, anti-submarine torpedoes, surface-to-air and surface-to-surface -surface missiles. It boasts a deadly force in Malaysia's ocean territories. Secondly, it also operates the Perdana Fast Attack Craft. This fast destroyer type warship was built by the firm Constructions Mécaniques de Normandie, Cherbourg, France in 1970 and launched on May 31, 1972. It is occupied by 30 people and has a ship operation capability of over 7 days. Following the Perdana, the RMN also operates the Casturi, a modern type corvette. It was built by the Horweiste Werke Deutsche Werft shipyard in Germany and was launched on the 14th of May 1983. Unlike the other two naval assets, this one boasts over 124 crew members inside it. Probably one of the most famous naval assets is the Scorpine class naval units, locally known as the KD Tunku Abdul Rahman. Named after the first Prime Minister of Malaysia, this submarine was built in Europe. The front is built in Cherbourg, France, while the back is built in Cartagena, Spain. It was commissioned in 2009 and since then has been roaming around the seas of Malaysia. It was reported that these Scorpion class submarines cost about 3.4 billion Malaysian ringgit, or 821 million Singaporean dollars at the time of acquisition. They also reported that it had about 50 million Malaysian ringgit in annual maintenance cost. And finally, the Kiris class, which is locally known as the KD Kiris, KD Sandang, and so on, has an unusual history. Unlike many of the other naval ships built in Europe, the Keris class was built by China Shipbuilding and Offshore International Corporation Co. Limited in Wuhan, China, and launched in 2019. This is one of the few Chinese-built army equipment that the Malaysian army employs. It was reported that this had a cost of about 1.17 billion Malaysian ringgit or 265 million US dollars in its contract of March 2017, but was later revised down to 1.05 billion Malaysian ringgit. Now, it is important to note that each of these naval assets boasts its own capabilities. For instance, the submarine has its own missiles, significant enough to fend off threats. It had once shot the Exocet SM-39 missiles, a French-built anti-ship missile. Some ships are also equipped with several naval artillery guns, close-in weapon systems, and radar systems. 
Moreover, while they are known as a Navy fleet, they also operate several aerial crafts. They have the Westland Lynx, an anti-submarine warfare, which, according to a 1999 article, saw them acquire six of these for 100 million euros. They also operate the Boeing Institute Scan Eagle, which, according to a 2020 article, saw a $19 million contract for 12 of these San Eagle unmanned aerial vehicles. But something else that is vital in understanding the strength of the RMN is its future. The most significant part of its future is its submarines. It was recently reported in 2023 that the RMN will get two more submarines in its arsenal. One will be acquired through the 14MP plan and then another in the 15MP plan. There is also a multi-role support ship transformation program launched in 2019. These replaced some old ships. Another program are the anti-submarine warfare helicopters, which is reported to enhance operational capabilities in maintaining the security and sovereignty of the country's waters. The Navy stated that the new helicopters will replace the current fleet of the Super Lynx MK-100 helicopters. As of now, the Navy is currently waiting on these new ASW helicopter projects, which will start in 2026. Another project is the Littoral Combat Ship LCS project, which will see the first vessel to be in the water and ready by September 2024. The LCS project is the largest acquisition in the Defense Ministry's history, with an overall value of 9 billion Malaysian ringgit. Now that we have a keen understanding about its current capabilities and its future, we can now discuss the strength of the Navy. So just how strong is the Royal Malaysian Navy? Well, to simplify things, we can look at databases such as the Global Firepower Index, which in 2023 ranked Malaysia as the 39th in Navy fleet strength in the entire world. That put it well above Germany, the United Kingdom, Israel, Canada, Australia, and a long list of other countries. The database further showed that the RMN has 82 total naval assets, which are 3 frigates, 6 corvettes, 2 submarines, 29 patrol vessels, and 4 mine warfare. However, it is important to know that these are just pure speculation. In a real war, experience, strategic locations, manpower, and a long list of other factors play a crucial role. That is why it is very difficult to state just how strong Malaysia's navy is. But to speculate, what we can think about is the experience of the RMN, what conflicts they have fought in, the training they were given. It is also vital to understand that the RMN is reliant on Malaysia's economy. The richer the country is, the more assets it can afford. Malaysia holds true to its name as a leader country in Southeast Asia, which essentially helps bolster its asset acquisition programs. It's also important to understand that Malaysia has vast maritime boundaries, particularly around the South China Sea, necessitating an active naval presence. These put Malaysia's naval strength to be of importance and will make the department more attractive for the government to invest in. This is also further bolstered by the Strait of Malacca, a crucial global shipping lane. What Malaysia lacks, however, is the extensive manpower and resources that larger naval powers possess. While the RMN is technologically advanced and strategically positioned, it operates with a smaller fleet and fewer personnel compared to the larger navies in the region. This limitation can impact its ability to maintain prolonged large-scale operations, especially in a scenario of a multi-front maritime conflict. Furthermore, the RMN's reliance on foreign technology for some of its key assets is another factor to consider. While collaborations with countries like France, Germany, and China have bolstered its capabilities, dependence on external sources for military technology can pose challenges in terms of maintenance, upgrades, and operational sovereignty. Self-reliance in defense technology is an area where the RMN, like many other navies, can continue to grow. And finally, we should also not forget about the warship procurement problem. In an article by Channel News Asia, they stated that, quote, the Malaysian government has paid 6.08 billion ringgit so far to Bosted Navy Shipyard SDN BHD for the purchase of six combat ships. Five should have been handed over to the Navy by August 2022, but none have been delivered. Things like these hinder the growth of Malaysia's naval strength. But anyway, do let us know what you think. Thanks for watching.